Oh, I'm dizzy. Hello. Yeah, yeah. She hard. So it's been it's been a few days. Now apparently you can leave the cardboard on, but like what's the point? It looks nasty. So I'm taking this bad boy off. At least down a little bit. I've already removed the cardboard on some of them, but I think it looks better. I figured the uh, cardboard helps keep the moisture in for at least a couple days, and it's been on here for like five days. So let's take her down. Yee! Oh. Quick review, the uh, quickcrete concrete tubes, or the concrete forms, are actually thinner than the sackcrete tubes. So depending on if you're going to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local hardware store. I think the, the sackcrete ones seem to be a little thicker and better, but I'm not sure exactly. Like I said, you don't have to do this, but because they're gonna be slightly exposed, I don't wanna get rid of the cardboard. Ugh. Oh yeah, baby. That's concrete. Hard, strong, sturdy, concrete. Ow. This is totally unnecessary, but I had to get rid of an old vegetable garden because I like to think I know how to make stuff, sort of. I used to think that I knew how to garden, but clearly I don't because this was the soil in my vegetable garden, which is just Virginia clay or the sandy clay stuff that Virginia is made of. So because I was getting rid of it, I decided to put it around the higher pile foundations just to give it even more frost protection. I think the frost level it's only 18 inches, so luckily my holes are all beyond that. So anyhow, probably wasting my time, but oh well.
Oh, it's bent, that's why. That's better. No leakage, baby. So when I was at the hardware store, I could have gone for a beam, but I opted to make my own beam because that's what cool guys do, apparently. Whenever you're working with dimensional lumber, you wanna find the crown. The crown is if you're looking down the spine of the piece of wood and kind of goes up and down. Uh, that way you're just kind of matching, well, you're matching the crowns of your dimensional lumber so things aren't kind of going opposite directions. And when you frame up walls and stuff, it just helps square everything up in the long run. You heard? So I'm gonna make a beam here. Glasses and hearing protection. Cause these nail guns shoot little bits of plastic off. Booyah. How'd you do it? <laughs> Some bows a bit, so I'm gonna have it like that and it'll soak right up into it. That's the idea, anyhow. So, to make my 20 foot length, I'm doing three beams of 10 feet on each side, and then my 12 footers will span the entire width of the building. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, baby. Ooh. Pretty good. Pretty good. bit of an optical illusion if it's level because uh, far piles are so much taller but there's just ever so slight there's ever so slightly a slope ever so slightly a slope every so sight lightly a slope every so slightly a slope but um that's level which is great Oopsies. and that's level so hopefully we are in good shape I think this is meant for branches, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> Bam! Hell yeah. We're gonna do 16 inch on center. Floor joists can vary. Again, I framed houses for like a hot minute, but you pick up quick when you're working 12 hour days or 10 hour or whatever it was. And uh, if you do your research, you'll find out dimensional lumber, no matter um, how thick it is, has a weight limit and a span. Main thing is span limit, but I'm going with two by eight to stay on the safe side. We're going 16 inch centers. Make sure all your crowns are upwards. All right, that's enough for the day. 
After we lay all them out, start to figure that it's going to be square, we still have to put plates on the middle sections where the these eight or the two by eight by ten footers meet in the middle to create the one solid beam. So we're going to have to put plates on those, and then um, we're going to put all the floor joists on the the twelve footers, square it up because with a sledgehammer you'll still be able to knock it around a bit and then we're gonna put bracket mounting directly into the concrete I mean I honestly don't know how necessary that is considering this thing's gonna be heavy enough but that way if it does get bumped into it will stay square all right another day another dollar